All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kemp. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 84, and today I will be presenting part one of an ongoing series regarding the Osirion in Abydos. Today's episode is in anticipation of an expedition to Middle and Upper Egypt coming up later this year. And to me, I can think of no better way to study a site than to prepare the research for a video to share with all of you. So the Osirion embodies everything that I love about Egypt, from the conventional academic archaeology to the perplexing, inexplicable mysteries that seemingly transcend our comprehension. So today, I will introduce the site, the researchers, and the data, and I will have a whole lot more on this amazing structure coming up very soon. On a side personal note, I stumbled across the website of the Asida Project almost 10 years ago when I began my investigation into the function of the Egyptian pyramids. And a lot of the research that you will see in today's episode comes from this team. So now, to be included as a part of this prestigious organization is a genuine honor. So to all of my friends and colleagues at the Asida Project, thank you so much for including me as a part of the team. And ladies and gentlemen, if this is the type of content that you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell. Like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. So to begin, the research presented in today's episode comes from the exceptional work of the Asita Project, Keith Hamilton, and James Westerman. And I will put links to the relevant documents and websites in the video description below. My intention is to introduce these researchers today, as there will be more integration of the conventional archaeology and my hypothesis on the function of the Egyptian pyramids coming up soon. For example, when we return to investigate the operations at the Pyramid of Sahure, as shown in the previous Sunday site visit. These prolific researchers, including those referenced from the early 1900s, have laid the groundwork that is necessary for truly understanding these sites. And much of this work was done before the modern quote-unquote restorations and sanitization of these structures, which allowed them to document everything in as close to its original condition as possible in comparison to what we see today, where all traces of their original potential functions have been removed, closed off, etc. So all of this quote-unquote conventional academic archaeology is absolutely critical and cannot be dismissed. So here are some fantastic pictures from the 1914 excavation of the Osirion. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why I moved to Egypt. These types of images bring out my inner child that was absolutely fascinated by the ideas of archaeology, excavation, and the search for lost ancient mysteries. And to this day, it is so exciting to see a glimpse into what it was truly like for these early explorers to begin investigating sites that had never before been seen. And the next few slides are some diagrams coming from Keith Hamilton's paper, A Layman's Guide to the Osirion. And he has an entire series of these quote unquote layman's guides that present the archeological research on almost every pyramid and site in Egypt with a lot of the pictures, measurements, etc., coming from the work of my colleagues at the Asita Project. So here you can see a diagram of the Osirion an underground structure with its above ground enclosure wall here, the entrance tunnel here, leading down into the main structure, which is here, and the above ground temple of Seti I located here. Next up, some diagrams showing the internal configuration of the Osirion with the entrance over here to the left, a vaulted chamber here, the inside structure, and central island located here. These two vertical shafts that tap into the subterranean water table here and another vaulted chamber here that was later added by Seti I. And you can also see the different types of stone indicated with the limestone here, sandstone here in yellow, and the red granite indicated in gray. 
Now, the vertical shafts tap into a subterranean aquifer system below the Osirion, which bring water into the moat surrounding this central island. And there are stairs leading down into this water-filled moat. So keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, as we proceed to investigate the function of this structure in later episodes, that the Osirion was absolutely intended for people to go inside, very different than the pyramids themselves. And those who entered this structure would be interacting with the water here in this moat. And here you can see a bird's eye view showing the entrance here, transverse chambers here and here, the cells surrounding the inner sanctum here, the moat and the central island here with the massive red granite support beams indicated here again in gray. There are also two rectangular cutouts within the central island, one located in the center here and the second here, which I will be discussing in just a moment. Next up, some fantastic renderings produced by Keith Hamilton that show the configuration and the geology of the construction so you can really see what the Osirion may have looked like in its original condition. And in this one particularly, you can see the water-filled moat surrounding the central island here with the stairs leading down into the water. And here, showing the stairs, again, leading into the water and the depth of the two vertical shafts leading down to the subterranean aquifer and water table below the structure. And the last one from Keith Hamilton showing a beautiful and complete representation of the original structure with the roofing beams that once covered this having been removed. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, just check out the landofchem.com. I have some fire Land of Chem merch, hoodies, long sleeve shirts, t-shirts in both different logos, a ton of different colors, digital copies of the book are still available, reprints and extremely rare signed copies of the limited first edition will be released on the website soon. But in the meantime, if you want to show some love, just check out the landofchem.com and thank you all so much for the support. All right, now on to the spectacular archaeological work during four different years of expeditions conducted by the Asita Project, upon which a lot of Keith Hamilton's work is based and referenced. And you will see in the following images that the water level within this structure still today is always fluctuating, which will be relevant in our later discussions. And you can see in this image here, the water level coming up to the top of the steps here. And in a different year, the water level had risen, partially covering over the central island. Next up, some images from inside the transverse chamber on the eastern side of the complex with the sandstone vaulted ceiling and limestone walls. And there is prolific evidence of water damage inside of this chamber, which is reported to have been added later to the structure and not an original part of the Osirion itself. However, there are some very interesting connections between the geometry of this chamber, as you can see here with the 30 degree angle of the vaulted ceiling and the geometry of the central pyramid of Giza with the primary reaction chamber also being constructed with this 30 degree angle. And remember that the lower part of this chamber within the central pyramid is bedrock here and the vault itself is limestone masonry. And finally, on to some contributions to the archaeological record that were discovered by James Westerman in 2012, as shown here by the Asita Project. This cylindrical drill hole in one of the depressions within the central island. And you can get a good idea of exactly where this is located in this photo. And a second one here showing a close up of this cylindrical drill hole. Now, these are the original picture from Westerman's expedition, and they stuck this metal pole into the conduit and discovered that it penetrated two separate blocks leading in the northern direction. And he mentions that drilling this hole in situ would present some complications. And this proves a very interesting fact about the construction of all of these sites that I have mentioned before, that these stones were engineered ahead of time 
during the design phase of planning the structure. And all of the holes, conduits, etc., were carved into the blocks before they were ever placed into the construction in their intended location. So this hole was designed, engineered, and cut before they ever started putting the structure together. And the same would have been true, for example, in the air shafts of the sulfur furnace within the Great Pyramid. And here is a closer image of this conduit, and I will leave the current speculations about the function of this conduit for a later episode. So now, in closing, all of the features of the Osirion in Abydos, specifically its precise integration into the subterranean water table, continue to bring to mind another structure that I've investigated that is also associated with the quote-unquote burial of Osiris, the so-called Osiris shaft on the Giza Plateau, which was also meticulously engineered and excavated down through the bedrock to tap directly into the water table far below the surface. And I believe there may also be a connection between the function of these two structures, both of which far predate the construction of the pyramids and may be some of the oldest sites in Egypt. And this hypothesis, along with a spectacular on-site expedition, inshallah, God willing, will be coming up in parts two and three here on the land of Kem. So please subscribe and stay tuned. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 84, the Osirion part one. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in the next episode in the series, Sunday Site Visit 11, featuring an exploration inside the Pyramid of Teddy I in Saqqara. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's video. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now. <laughs>